Hello and welcome to ITV News Central. And the space artist who's over the moon about his local landmarks. Now, even though it's nearly 50 years since man first landed on the moon, hopes of reaching other planets are still a distant dream, but not in the mind of one Midlands man. Yes, his imagination has helped the rest of us visualise what life on other worlds might look like, and his work has been celebrated across this one. Andy Bevan reports. Welcome to the worlds of David A. Hardy. He's spent more than six decades creating masterpieces of moonscapes and Milky Ways. They all start life in his spare bedroom at Hall Green in Birmingham. As a schoolboy, David saw photo-like paintings in a library book and asked his art teacher if he could do something similar. I said, you know, aren't these wonderful? How, how do you think he does them? And he's, well, they're, they're photographs, aren't they? No, I said, they can't be photographs. We haven't been there yet. And he said, he said, well, if you want to do that, I'm afraid you'll just have to, uh, to work at it. And I, I guess that's what I did, really. Now aged 77, he's the longest established living space artist in the world. He's illustrated and authored numerous books and has counted amongst his friends science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke and Sir Patrick Moore, whom he first worked with after a friend recommended the astronomer take a look at the then teenager's sketches. The next thing I knew, there was a series of telegrams from Patrick saying, could I phone his phone number? And uh, he wanted me to illustrate a book for him. And uh, it was a, a book called Sons, Myths and Men, about the, the myths and legends of the stars. I illustrated his books. I did when, when the Sky at Night started in 1957. I became his artist on that. And that's how it all started. David has also worked on several movies. It was his specially commissioned artwork that enabled the production team of the 1984 fantasy Never Ending Story to visualise how the final film would look. Oh, cool. the Ivory Tower. David's artwork can be seen all over the world. This piece, for example, was done for an exhibition to mark the millennium, but it's now off to a new home at the London headquarters of the British Interplanetary Society. Just as technology has transformed space exploration, it's also changed the way David works. His attic is now his digital studio, with the latest software helping him to stay at the top of his trade. Publishers wanted worked on digitally because they could then um, be, have it sent on a CD originally and then later on by email and if they want any changes made they could just take any changes from green to blue and you could do it just easily you know. David is now president of the International Association of Astronomical Artists, vice president of the Association of Science Fiction and Fantasy Artists and in 2003 an asteroid previously known as 1998 SB32 was officially named David Hardy. Not bad for a Brummy boy whose early work was illustrating boxes for a certain chocolate maker just down the road. Science and art have always been sort of diametrically opposed, never the twain shall meet, and I've, I've never, never understood that. I, I think they can meet, and art of, of the type that I produce can be just as beautiful as, as art that uh, the terrestrial artists produce. Andy Bevan, ITV News. Certainly a talented younger yep. man, I should say. Well, uh, Andy tells us that the last painting is called Boring on Mars, which would <laughs> explain the familiar looking building covered in silver discs that you saw. Yes, more of those uh, pictures on our website, by the way, itv.com slash central. Did you, you, you watch the film when you were younger? You liked Never Ending yes. Story? Remember Do you remember the song? Which was sung by Pop Quiz? Um, Go on. Human, no, 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 no. Kachigugu. Kachigugu Lamal. Yes. There you go. Same age. Super. Good job. That's it from us, though. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.